Here is a simple sounding question, but it might still find a way to exercise some muscles in your mind. We're going to look at uh, two ways of finding a vector that is parallel to a plane. Remember, vectors have direction and magnitude, uh, not necessarily location, so you know, you put two vectors that are the same direction and the same length and uh, those are called the same vector. So when we talk about parallel we're basically meaning a vector that is in the same direction as a vector on the plane itself. So I said two ways. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit more energy on one way than the other. So here is a plane given to us and these numbers have uh, meaning. The normal vector to the plane it's kind of what gives the plane its orientation or its how it's laid out. That normal vector is the vector 2 comma negative 5 comma 1 or for all you IJKers out there 2i minus 5j plus k. So that's the vector that comes out, um, well, if it was touching, perpendicular to the plane. It's not the most precise term. It is orthogonal to all vectors on the plane itself. So here is my little mini model plane. It's just a little piece of scrap paper. I drew some representative vectors on it. These vectors all go in different directions. I, I'm basically trying to track down a vector that would be parallel to one of these vectors on this plane. That's what parallel to the plane is. A vector that goes right through the paper, that's not parallel to the plane. So two methods. Uh, the first method I'm going to spend very little time on, but I, I want to honor it and mention at least. All right, so here's that, that first option. Find two points on the plane. Write the vector between them. Okay, so if I could track down the coordinates of two points on the plane, I could just write a vector that goes between two points. That's something that we've done before in previous parts of our instruction. There's lots of ways you could find coordinates of points. You could try to find uh, intercepts. You can randomly choose two coordinates and solve for the third coordinate. Uh, and uh, go from there. Uh, you know actually one set of coordinates, negative 7, 3, and 6, so you could use that as uh, one. But if you could find a second set of coordinates, uh, writing a vector between them wouldn't be too difficult. So that's kind of uses algebra skills that I'm not going to spend time here reviewing. So I want to look at the, the other possibility we know the vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to the plane and we want to find a vector that's on the plane well what makes the normal vector the normal vector is if they were touching it's perpendicular to every vector on the plane makes a right angle if they were starting from the same point so the normal vector is orthogonal to all vectors on the plane 
and mathematically what that means that, that we have we have a little computational method to check for this in this case if my normal vector is 2 negative 5 1 and I put here a vector on the point their dot product would be zero. Their dot product would be zero. That's the part of the cosine of theta formula that is sufficient to show if two vectors would make a 90 degree angle if they were starting from the same point. So maybe we could sort of, uh, instead of guessing a second set of coordinates on our given plane, maybe this will be mathematically a little bit less work. So for an example, 2 and negative 5 and 1, dot product, we need three components here. That should be 0. And we literally can choose two numbers for any, well, fill in any of the two spots and solve for the third number. But we can't use the zero vector because the zero vector has no magnitude at all. So you can't say it's perpendicular or parallel to anything. So we need to choose some values. So we could choose zero for one of them and pick a number here. You might be able to just eyeball a set of three numbers that would make this true. And there are infinitely many vectors on our plane, remember. Infinitely many vectors on our plane. I'm just going to go this route. What if I choose uh, 1 and 1 and I would like to find my um, my uh, we'll call this uh, third component V3 for our vector third component and let's just solve for that uh, 2 times 1 negative 5 times 1 plus V3 is 0 uh, that's negative 3. V3 would be equal to positive 3. Don't celebrate. We haven't finished the problem yet. We've got to read the question. Uh, find a vector that is parallel to the plane. Our vector would be the vector 1, 1, 3. 1, 1, 3. That vector would represent, you know, one of these infinitely many vectors on the plane itself. There you have it. Not too difficult. There are infinitely many correct answers here. The real trick is to just not use two zeros when you're finding the third coordinate. Uh, I'm not even going to write that down because I want to leave something for you to remember. But Mathematically, it may not be too difficult to find it this way. I often find this to be less difficult computationally than this method. This method is easier to explain. I don't know which one's best, so I'll give you both instead. Until next time.